Hey guys, Justin Skinner here, and today you're going to see how to build the Nito Fastback using the components that I use, your lovely host, Justin Skinner. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, because I know not all of you are beginner builders. I know a lot of you actually know how to build already, so you're not going to want to watch every last detail of how to build. So I'm going to first show you a fully built Nito that's ready to go and just point out the little nuances of the frame that will help when you are configuring your build. So, uh, and I just wanna point out that this is an experimental filament that we're trying out uh, that we may use in the future. So this color is currently not available, but it sure is pretty. Okay, so one of the first things I want to point out is the capacitors. So if you're using the Hobby Wing stack, it comes with a capacitor for you to use and there are many places you can mount it um, such as if you're using uh, uh, the wire method where you wire it up to your battery you can basically just set it inside your stack if you want anywhere up here and there will be plenty of room um, above your stack so to get a little look in there see if you can see down if you can see in there there's 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 plenty of stack room or room above your stack and you don't have to worry about your pod crushing down. So this is using a ton of pressure right there. And as you see, this stuff doesn't move. So this pod is very, very firm. Um, it's a TPE material, not a TPU material. So it's not as easy to move around as the TPU is. It's a, definitely a superior filament over TPE. So uh, TPU, I mean. So. The capacitor, how I do it is we have these little wings on the frame, and this is actually a still a prototype frame right here. This is a V2 or 3, and this was the final version. Um, the difference being is the wing doesn't come out as far on that one versus this one. So there's a little bit less material. You see that little extra bit of carbon that just got dropped in favor of uh, a smaller wing because it wasn't needed as much. Um, the other difference would be the uh, right here it's a little bit rounder to allow for a box tool and a box tool is this um, what your nylon nuts can go in so that fits in there now versus that one which you couldn't fit the tool in and then the little protector uh, wing on the back um, it's actually just been changed a little bit the cut has uh, as you see, this one's broken because we had the cut going all the way across for the zip ties, and now it doesn't. So that's just a little bit more durability. So besides that, um, the way I use the wing, I use it to house or, or uh, mount the capacitor in a remote location outside the stack because when I'm getting in and out of the stack, the wires move around a lot, and these wires, they end up stressing and breaking, you have to repair them. If it's remote mounted, something that's not gonna move when you're messing with your stack, then it's more likely to last a longer time. Secondly, as you see, this is actually not the the Hobby Wing stack I'm using in here. This is a uh, hodgepodge of uh, parts, um, the Furious FPV VTX, and their 14 F4 OSD. Uh, they sent me this to test, so I was testing it, and I have an Omnibus F4 or Omnibus 4-in-1. Uh, uh, no, not Omnibus. I'm not sure what 4-in-1 that is. I can't remember. Honestly, but it's an old uh, old form one that I was using, so it's thrown in there. But other than that, it's the same style build. I still build all of these fastbacks, and it's designed around a stack-based build. Nothing is mounted off the stack. So we have stack plates now for uh, you that'll come in your kits, and they look like they look like this. The stack plate's meant to go like this with the curved edges going uh, along the frame. That way your camera, when tilted, isn't hitting it. And that's where your VTX and your RX mount on either side. And as you see right here, I'm using an Axi UFL antenna. Now this is a great antenna to use for a very uh, clean and secure antenna situation. Uh, if you're worried about reception, I've gone 1,700 uh, feet with this, this setup right here, going straight away from me. So if you're going like this away from me, um, carbon blocking and everything and no issues whatsoever. Uh, so this is a great, great um, uh, mounting method for these antennas. It keeps them perfectly safe. I've never broken an antenna 
on a fastback using this mounting method. If you're going to use a full on antenna, such as one of these, there are two different mounting methods that I recommend. I've used them both. So the first is if you want to just have it going straight out the back like this coming out, it could be zip tied down. Now that is how this little wing broke, but we added extra stiffness to this, uh, to this plate right there. And so it, it can uh, survive a lot better. Uh, I, the reason I don't like mounting them like this is not because of, I'm worried about breaking the carbon is because antennas at that point become more vulnerable when they're out in the open and they're able to be hit. Uh, my preferred method when using one of these is to arm mount it. I know it looks weird. It doesn't look the cleanest, but what I'll do is I'll have the, the pigtail come out and I'll have it come out at one of the angles and then I'll have it run up underneath and I just zip tie it down. And for racing situations, when you're in a football field, two football fields uh, of area, that's a good angle. Um, it's not a bad angle at all. You're not gonna have uh, reception issues. I have not ever had reception issues in a racing situation mounting that way. And when I started mounting this way, I stopped breaking this style antenna. So that's one way your antenna, this is a, look at this, this is a beat up antenna, this is an old antenna. This is a perfect working antenna. And that's because I arm mount them. All right. So those are your two different methods. Um, this one, when you do it, just attach it to your, your, you'll see this in the build video. If you want to watch the whole build, build video, awesome. But you'll mount it to your antenna or your VTX. You run it back underneath the stack and you can zip tie it down onto your plate and it holds it perfectly in place and it's not going to go anywhere and you'll get great reception. But besides that, XT60, this is the last thing. I run my XC60 a little bit longer because I'll run my battery going this way, uh, uh, going this way with the tails, pigtails coming out this way, and then I wrap the pigtails back around and plug in so they're they're running off to the side. Um, when I run a shorter pigtail right here, and then I run the battery like this, going pigtails this way, there's just too much uh, uh, pig, there's too much lead hanging out that can get caught in branches. I'd rather the lead be uh, closer to the body or non-existent as much as possible. And so I run a little bit longer lead and then I zip tie it down on this right here to hold it down. All right, with that said, I'm going to put the built one aside. This one's going aside and we're gonna start working on building this step by step. And I'll show you all the process, all the parts you'll need on hand. If you've never built a frame before, you should be able to do it after this. If you've never built a, uh, a quad before, I'll walk you step by step through it using the components listed below this video. All right, cool. Let's get going. Oh, I almost forgot before I get started on the build, how I mount the RX. There's two different ways I mount the RX. The first way and the main way I mount it is actually right along the side of the four and one down here in little forever tubes. Um, uh, people are going to freak out and say it's all up in the carbon and uh, it's going to get, you're going to have RSSI issues, you're going to fail safe. Um, just, just take my word for it that it won't happen. Um, it's never happened to me. I've gone that, that 1700 feet that I did for the antenna test. I also did it with that, that tested to locked in inside the carbon pocket with no issues whatsoever, um, never had an issue. But the second way, I also do it sometimes, um, and it's just depending on how the wires line up. Um, they just come back up inside the plate, right next to the VTX, and they're just, I'm not sure if you can see that, but they're just hanging out on top, chilling. And when the pod comes down, uh, over, they're protected, and, and there's no issues this way either, so it's whatever works best for you, but there, there are no external mounting methods on the pod. Uh, I, I do not believe it is necessary. Um, it, it's not necessary. I can tell you that. Um, for racing, this is a racer. This is not meant to go long distance. If you're trying to go long distance, this is not the quad for you. Uh, and if you're going to use this quad for long distance, you're going to have to rig up your own method of mounting. And some people do it where they have the antennas running out and coming back up like this. Um, check out the RC Attic. Uh, Seth, he does a really cool method where he just mounts them off the back of the arms. Um, you can do it that way if you want for the long distance, but I'm telling you, just, just keep it simple. There's no, no need whatsoever to have these sticking out and having a 90 degree angle and, and everything like that. 
there's no issues this way. I've been doing this now for, God, I couldn't even tell you. I've been testing this frame out forever and I've mounted these antennas like this. Never had an RSSI issue whatsoever. So just trust me, build it the way I tell you to build it and you'll enjoy your flying experience. All right, let's get started.